What is going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to cover Security Onion. This is something that I've been trying to get to for some time now. For those that are not familiar with Security Onion, if you head over to ChatGPT, you could get a better idea as to exactly what this will entail. So today we are just covering the installation process, but in the future, in this playlist, we will create several videos that will cover all the various features. So in this case, Security Onion, like I said, performs a number of tasks. Um, so for instance, it can act as a IDS or an intrusion detection system. And in some cases, it can even be an IPS, an intrusion prevention system, because it could perform some actions and prevent some um, traffic depending on what is being what is taking place. With that being said, it could also monitor the network traffic, it could perform a full packet capture, and then we could go ahead and analyze that traffic. We could also use it for log management, host based monitoring. So that's pretty cool. This is something that we have done in a previous video where we had covered the host based um, endpoint monitoring using Waza or Wazoo, however you pronounce that. So in the future video, we are going to cover the process of putting this all together with several other concepts and topics that we have previously covered. Um, and then obviously we have threat hunting, which is another huge piece with the security onion. And last but not least is the fact that it is open source and it is free and it has a thriving community community. Uh, so this is definitely something that I wanted to cover. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get right into it. To start, you're going to go head over to docs.securityonion.net. I will have the links in the description below, or I will have it in another blog post. And that will also be in the description below. Let's go ahead over to the Security Onion documentation. In this case, we are on version 2.4. That is the latest version as of August 2024. Uh, and then we're going to review the steps down here at the bottom. For the very first step, we are going to want to re review the hardware requirements. So we'll, we will open that in a new tab. The biggest thing here is we want to review this chart here or this table here. For our lab, we are going to just install a eval. Um, you could go ahead and install an import. This is pretty much just allowing you to import any logs or network uh, PCAP files into the environment to kind of get a feel of how this was going to be used. Uh, it is not really used for any of the other features that we had discussed at the beginning of this video. Eval is similar to import. It is not a production environment, but it is a just a way for you to test out um, Security Onion. And then you got the other ones down here. So you could even do a standalone, which is pretty much a production environment from what I understand, requiring four CPUs. The only difference between eval and standalone is the amount of RAM that is going to be used. So in for a lab, eight gigabytes of RAM and an eval um, should be good enough. If you scroll on down, you'll be able to see that. So under import and import installation runs the minimal processes required to import and view the results. Uh, and then in, uh, eval installation runs the minimal process required for a single machine to sniff flag traffic from a tap or span port, which is what we are going to be doing in the in a future video. Therefore, its hardware requirements are higher than import as shown in the table above. It is not a production environment. So after we have a better understanding of what we will need, let's go ahead over to step number two and download and verify our ISO image. So let's open that in a new tab. And then here, if we go down to download and verify our, our ISO image, go ahead and click on that link in a new tab. And here's where we will get the download link and download the ISO file along with the hash of the um, file to compare against. Also the GPG keys that we can go ahead and use to make sure that we are not getting anything malicious and that we have the correct file. Uh, and it gives you all those commands here. Uh, in my case, I just went ahead and download, downloaded this on a Windows machine. And so I can import it into my Hyper-V environment to create the virtual machine. For the next step, depending on what you are using, we are going to be using the Hyper-V manager in order to create a virtual machine on our Windows uh, computer. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to go ahead and go to 
uh, new, new virtual machine. And based on the specs that we had just read from the documentation, we're going to go ahead and get that in here. So we'll just do security onion. Just leave it at generation one. And um, for this, we're just going to do 8,000. If we were doing the, the production or the standalone, we'll do 16,000 for 16 um, gigs. Uh, but in this case, we'll just do 8,000, which is close enough to what we need at minimum. Um, one of the requirements is going to be having two NICs. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and just assign one of those NICs here. One's going to be used for a sensor, and the other is going to be used for the management interface in order to interact with the... Um, administration function of this virtual machine. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and create a virtual hard disk. By default, it is going to go into this path here, go ahead and change it to whatever you would like. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this here. And we'll, the minimum for this machine is going to be 200 gigabytes per the documentation. And then we're going to hit install an operating system later and finish. Now, once this has finished, you're going to go ahead and open up this, go to settings. The other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the, the number of virtual processors, bump that up to four. And then you are going to want to install the under the DVD drive, you're going to want to put the image file here or the ISO. So let's go ahead, browse for that file and place it right here. All right, so once you have found that file, let's go ahead and just click apply. And that will be it as far as setting up this virtual machine. And then once you have that done, you're going to go ahead and want to start that up and just follow the prompts. It does take quite some time. Um, it's going to ask you several basic questions at the very beginning. And then the installation process could take up to an hour or even longer. In my case, it, it took right around an hour uh, and then several other prompts came up. Uh, so with that, instead of waiting the entire time, since I already have a fresh installation here, is we're going to just go ahead and cover the process using the documentation provided by Security Onion. So Security Onion has provided the, for first time users, pretty much every screenshot or every prompt that you have on their documentation. And that can be found here. So if we scroll down after we first get to here, this will be the first screen right here. Go ahead and select install security on 2.4.90 or whatever version that you are currently downloading. The next prompt will ask your username and password. Make sure you remember this as this is what you will use in, in order to log in after the installation has been completed. Once it is finished, you will prompt it to reboot. Uh, this is the part that I was saying that will take up to an hour or even longer. In my case, it was only about an hour. After rebooting, you will be asked to um, use your username and password that you had set up earlier. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and perform a standard installation. This is the part where we were talking earlier about the different modes. Uh, in the lab, we're only going to use an eval. You have the option of doing import, which is just an even minimal version of security on it, allowing you to import PCAP or any log files for just kind of getting used to the platform. Uh, the eval is not for production, and then you got standalone and then distributed and the other one desktop. So in this case, go ahead and select the eval. Then you're going to want to go ahead and depending on what uh, environment you have, I recommend setting up for standard so you could get the full uh, experience. Go ahead and type agree. Set the host name here. If you leave it to Security Onion, you will get a warning prompting you that if uh, Security Onion in a distributed environment can cause conflicts. But in this case, we're not using a distribu distributed environment. So just go ahead and click on use anyway. Next, uh, since we have two NICs, uh, make sure that you specify two NICs. Um, you're going to go ahead and want to select the one that it has external access to the internet and then click on or highlight that and then click OK. 
Next, you're going to want to go ahead and select a static IP that is recommended per their documentation. So you're just going to specify an IP address and the mask. So in my case, and as in this example here, 192.168.1.81 slash 24 is what I used. You're going to want to go ahead and set that gateway address. Same thing as your environment that your computer is in. DNS servers, this is using the Google DNS servers. If you're using a other DNS server like Pi-hole, uh, that is something that you might want to use here. DNS search domain. You go ahead and change the doc default uh, Docker IP range. Let's go ahead and just leave that. This is another, depending on how you have it set up. Uh, in my case, I went with direct internet requests connect directly to the internet and it's not going through any pro uh, proxy. Here you're going to create the username for the security onion console, set a password. Last but not least, you're going to select how you're going to access it. In this case, it is, uh, I just selected IP, but you could also use host name uh, or other. Allow connections through host based firewall if necessary. Then you're going to go ahead and specify the IP range or the IP address that you want to allow through the host based firewall. In my case, I just allowed my entire local subnet. Uh, to have access to this um, machine. Go ahead and select tab to get to yes and confirm. And now you have completed the installation process. So to close out the installation, go ahead and head over to the IP address that you had specified in the static assignment. So 192.168.1.81 is the IP address that I had assigned. And then go ahead and log in on the or here into the email address and the password that you had entered in that initial prompt. And once you log in, you'll be brought to this page. And that is essentially it. Go ahead and head over to dashboards. And after you give it a few minutes after loading it up or the fresh install, you should be able to see some information already coming in. This is something that we're going to have to obviously modify going forward as this is not pertaining to the environment that we are looking to monitor. Um, uh, but that's going to close out today's video. I hope you were able to take something away. This is going to be a new playlist covering Security Onion. We are going to cover a lot more labs. Um, the next thing that we are going to have to cover is, in my case, I'm going to install OpenWRT. It's a custom firmware for my router and allowing me to create a port mirror in order to pretty much tap into my network and capturing all of this traffic. Um, so with that being said, Hope you enjoyed it. As always, never stop learning.